Hey, what's going on traders? This is Chris from Virilo Trading. I hope you guys are doing good today. In this video, we're gonna cover a trading platform. It's gonna be another trading platform review type video. And uh, if you guys are new to the channel, I just wanna tell you a bit about myself. My name is Chris and I've been trading for a little bit over three years. And uh, within the last two years, I've done a lot of videos reviewing trading platforms and talking about a lot of the problems and tools that is associated with trading. So if you're interested in this type of stuff, feel free to check out other videos on the channel. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about a relatively new future trading platform this trading platform was developed for the broker and FCM Ironbeam Ironbeam is a futures broker I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about them as the video goes on hope you enjoy it and smash the like button because that's how YouTube works all the time never forget it before we start the video I'll just give you a bit of an outline as to who is Ironbeam or what is Ironbeam so Ironbeam is a brokerage company they're a futures broker or an FCM um, a futures commission merchant and there are advantages to having an account directly with an FCM. In fact, Ironbeam is probably one of the only FCMs that actually will allow retail customers like you and me to open accounts and hold funds with them and also call your broker directly. Um, so it's kind of interesting. So definitely it's worth checking out, I would say, if you're into futures trading. Uh, another popular FCM out there is AMP Futures, and I'm sure a lot of you guys use AMP Futures, and you know that their customer support is um, not exactly anything to cry about. So definitely if you do want a more direct relationship with your broker or a more personalized experience, then Ironbeam might be a better choice. If you want to learn more about Ironbeam as a broker FCM, I'll link you a video down below and you can watch that, and you can also do your own research about them as well. So guys, in this video, we're going to look at the Ironbeam platform. So this is a relatively new trading platform, and I'm going to go over all of the tools available here and what I think of them. So let's get it. This is the platform. It's a web-based platform. It's developed using Angular. Their original platform, which used to be called Firetip, was developed using Java. They have moved away from Java currently and are now using Angular. Another thing is this trading platform is developed by a company called Certigo and they're developers down in California, I believe. So this is the platform, it's web-based, and what I can tell you by testing it is that it works best on probably Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome. I also tested it on Firefox, but it didn't perform as well on that browser. Now, that being said, the first really interesting thing about this platform is that it's available on mobile, on desktop, and on web-based. And what's really cool here is that when you create custom workspaces, in this case, you can see I have a quilt board, two advanced trading DOMs and a chart. When you create a workspace like this and you open up the mobile app, the workspace is identical on the mobile app. And I'll get to that later in the video. I'll show you how the mobile app works, but it's basically identical to the web-based platform that I'm showing you right now. So that's really interesting. And uh, of course, there are advantages with having a web-based platform because let's say you live in a place where your internet is not reliable or you get an internet outage or a power outage and then you need to exit a trade on your phone or something like that. Okay, the next advantage I wanna talk about here if you do use this trading platform. Number one, all of the indicator and study processing is done on their server side, meaning if you have really complicated indicators and formulas that are calculating, you know, standard deviations or correlation coefficients or kind of complicated formulas, all of that is being done on their server side. None of it is on your computer. Second thing, all the orders you place with your broker using this platform are also all server side. So that means that if you submit an order to buy and it has not filled yet and you have an attached stop loss, that attached order, which is basically part of a bracket or it could just be an attached stop on its own, that attached order is held on the server side, meaning that if your order fills and your internet was off in that moment, then your stop will not disappear. And the last thing is they have their own dedicated data feed and routing to the exchange. So when you place orders through this trading platform, you're trading through the routing service known as Ironbeam. So it's not CQG, it's not Rhythmic, it's Ironbeam. They have their own connection to the exchange, okay? And that means they have their own data as well. So now that you guys understand that, we can go over the platform and look at various things that are available here, okay? So this is basically a demo workspace and you can see here on the right side of the screen, there's a cool board here. What I've realized first from using this platform is that it's very user-friendly and it's not very complicated to set up. So I'll just give you an example by creating a brand new workspace. So we'll go up to the top left of the screen here and we'll click there and now we'll create a new workspace. All right, let's create it and make it a test workspace and it'll be a free form workspace. Let's get started. 
And now in order to add windows here, we need to go up to here where it says trading. We click there and these are the choices of tools that we can add here. So the first tool, and I believe one of the best tools available in this platform is the quote board itself, or what can also be called as a trading matrix. That was another word they had for it, but basically it's a quote board and it's a highly customizable quote board here. So let's add a symbol to it and I'll just type in a symbol, S&P 500 futures, and you can see I typed in ES and all of the futures contracts come up. So I'll click on the March S&P futures. I'll add that to the watch list. I'll also add the Russell 2000 futures here. All I did was type RTY and you can see the symbol appeared very quickly. So already this process is very simple for adding symbols to the watch list. So I added three of the equity index futures there and we have a quote board. These columns here can all be customized and changed. You can see they're blinking yellow right now. Every time something changes here, including the bid size or ask size, it blinks in yellow. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that, but if you're not a fan of it, you can easily remove these columns out. So. For example, let's say I wanted to change some of these columns. You would pretty much go up to the widget settings kind of gear icon in the top right. And then over here, you're able to change stuff around. So let's say I didn't want to have the bid and ask over there, get rid of it. And you can see it's no longer there. Now, what I really like about this quote board is how they show the change figure here. And you can see the time of the last trade right there. Um, so some traders out there, scalpers, they do use quote boards to kind of um, get an idea of what market correlations are up to in the real time. Um, so I would say out of all the quote boards that I've looked at on a number of different platforms, I would say probably this one is the best because it's just the easiest to read. I really like the change figure right there and also the fact that they're displaying the live volume right there. So if you just want a quick way of seeing what's active, you can kind of stare at the volume here and see the volume coming into the contract and you can also stare at the change figure as well. Okay, now of course this quote board is highly customizable and I haven't really customized it at all here, but I will leave that up to you guys. Let's explore another trading tool. Okay, so since most of you guys are DOM traders, you futures traders, let's bring up the market depth. So let's open up the depth or what they call the advanced trader, another word for it. And let's just bring up the S&P 500 futures March contract, which is the front month currently. And this is what their trading DOM looks like. You can see there's a few columns that are here by default and we'll talk about them right here. So we have a volume at price on the left. And by the way, the developers of this platform are always developing new things. And what I've heard when clients request new features, they add them in pretty fast, but I've already asked them if they could add a specific way of displaying the volume at price. And I believe they might be working on it. So this is the depth of market. You can see there's a few settings up here regarding your trading and your quantity. You can go flat on your position. You can cancel all orders. The way you place orders is by simply clicking on either the buy or sell column or by clicking on the price column. A left click on the price column below the current price will submit a buy limit order. So I've now submitted a buy limit order right there at that price. If I right click on the price column below the current price, it will submit a stop order, a stop sell order in that case. Now that's kind of interesting and from a workflow standpoint, I kind of understand it as well. So for example, let's say a trader wants to sell at this price and then all of a sudden they want to have a, a buy stop there just in case the market goes higher than they thought, they can easily put those two in right away. Now, of course, you can also program attached orders. One thing to note here is that um, in the demo environment of this platform, I'm currently on a demo account here. The demo environment is not the same as the live environment. And what I've noticed is that when clicking on the DOM here, sometimes there could be about a few milliseconds lag for the order to appear. And I've asked Mike Murphy, the director of trading at Ironbeam this, and he told me that it's basically that the demo accounts are on a different server and in the live environment, they will appear as soon as you click. So there is a little bit of a lag in the demo account. So if you do use a demo account and you see that there's a bit of a lag, I'm just telling you why. So when it comes to adding attached orders and that kind of stuff, I personally haven't experimented with it too much, but we can go up to here where it says strategy and we can click to enable a strategy, select the strategy, for example. So what I'm going to do is click on new strategy right here and we get brought to this menu right here. If I bring down this drop down, you can see there's a few options by default here for example, bracket order. And it will give us pretty much a basic idea of what a bracket order would be. From what I can show you, you can see here stop loss offset. That's obviously how many ticks away your stop's gonna be. So for example, I'll put that on five and then the take profit, I'll set it to eight. I'll save the strategy and let's see if it works now. 
So let's select the bracket order strategy. There's a description of the strategy in this case. So let's go ahead and place a new order now that we have a strategy attached and we'll see that we now have an attached stop and attached limit here. Now, there are some certain features that I use in my main trading platform that I would say are not available in this platform that I've discovered that they're not available. However, I'm just sort of um, scratching the surface as to kind of what's possible here. And I have been in contact with the director of trading to see if some of these features would be possible in this platform. So let's keep going and look at some of the other tools here. So for example, let's bring up a chart. We're going to put up the NASDAQ future. So I'll type in NQ, I'll bring up March contract. And overall, I got to say this platform is very smooth, the way it's displayed on the screen and the way you kind of move widgets around and everything. Um, it doesn't feel dated. A lot of you guys out there complain that you don't like certain platforms that kind of look like they're from the 90s. Well, this one doesn't look like it's from the 90s. It kind of has a sort of modern look to it. In this case, you can see I've brought up a very basic chart. If I click on the bottom of the chart, I can either make it wider or thinner, and I can also adjust the vertical scale as well. Double clicking on the price scale does what it normally does in every platform. I can change the time frame pretty easily here as well. There's a 15 minute chart for the NASDAQ here. If you want to go to a daily chart, you can see the data also loads very quickly, switching time frames around probably about a second or so it takes to load it. So that's pretty interesting. Now, one thing I haven't experimented with too much on the chart, which is the drawing number one and number two, adding custom indicators and formulas. Now, from what I understand, there's a large amount of customization that's possible when it comes to the formulas side here. Now, as you can see on the top right of almost every widget here, there is the option to add a formula. And these formulas, I imagine, can be highly customized. And you're not looking at a guy who knows anything about coding. So I can't really go very far when it comes to adding custom formulas or creating them. And I also would not know how to make a formula trade for me automatically. Now, from what I can understand, these formulas here can also be used to create custom automated trading strategies. So for all of you quantitative guys out there, this might be an interesting platform to check out for you guys, um, just putting it out there, okay? So definitely do your own research. All right, so let's add a formula or an indicator to this chart. So I clicked on edit chart, then I'm gonna click on add formula. And it looks like there's hundreds of different ones here you can choose from, and these are basically indicators that you can place on the chart. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and find a relatively simple indicator I can put. And let's go find a simple moving average and see if they've got it. All right, so there's a simple moving average. Um, 21 is fine, and um, data set time bars, time bars volume, or time bars trade count. So I'll just leave it to time bars and uh, let's save that. And now we have a moving average on the chart and it's also displayed as a value on the chart, which is interesting. If we want to change the color or the look of that formula, we go to edit chart again, we go to the formula we added, we click on the gear icon here to edit the formula and we can change the chart type and we can also change the color of that. So for example, if I want it to be yellow, I'll choose that and it'll ask what the style of the line is, etc. And I'll just save that and see what happens. And as you can see, I changed the color of the line right there. Okay, so let's go over to potentially a custom workspace that I created. And uh, I gotta remind you guys that all of these workspaces you create are gonna be exactly the same on the mobile app. And I'll show you that as well when I get to the mobile app section. All right, traders, I'm on my iPhone right now and we're going to take a look at the Iron Beam application. So let's go ahead and fire it up. You can download this on the App Store and I believe it's available on both Apple and Android devices. So in this scenario, I have logged in with Face ID and it's currently loading the platform here. And you can see we're on the demo workspace and these are the widgets that I had open on the demo workspace. If I click over on the trading matrix, you can see that the trading matrix looks exactly the same as it did on the web-based platform. And I'll go over to the advanced trader, which would be the DOM, exactly the same as it did on the web-based platform. So for example, I can place an order here by clicking on the DOM It'll ask me if I wanna place a limit buy, sell with a stop order, or buy with a limit order protected. And I don't really know what that means necessarily, but it will bring up an order ticket in this scenario, and let's say I just wanna submit that, and now I have a bid in the market at that price. So if I wanted to potentially move that order, what I did was I clicked and dragged on it, which is pretty interesting, and I thought that was pretty cool to have on a mobile application. 
Um, so I can actually click and drag that up. Now, if I click on the order itself or tap on it, what I meant, it'll ask me if I wanna move the order or cancel it. In this scenario, I'll just cancel that order. Um, so I feel like this is a good solution for traders, potentially if you get trapped in a trade or maybe you're trying to manage a certain swing position that you had on in a futures contract. Um, and that's it. And you can see that the settings menu is exactly the same as well here. And I'll just go in through a few different menus to show you different things. All of my workspaces that I created are here as well. So if I click on chart, for example, that was my chart workspace. I'll click on the first chart I had and there we have a chart right there on mobile. So there's a NASDAQ futures one minute chart. Now I'll go overhead and click on a daily chart. And it does seem that the data is loading just as fast as it was on the web-based platform, which is always great, you know. Um, the most annoying thing for me is dealing with platforms that are just slow at loading things. And this platform is not slow, at least from what I can see so far here after using it for a couple of weeks and testing things out. And as you can see, I'm kind of moving through it pretty quickly here, going through different menus. And it just feels very snappy, I enjoy it. And you know, I'm a millennial here and, and I really like it when things move fast here. I'm not one to be laggy. As soon as my internet lags, I call my company and start screaming at them on the phone. All right guys, <laughs> let's go on with the video. So here's a custom workspace I created. It's basically just got four depth of markets in there and I haven't really scrunched them up together. Personally, I normally keep my DOMs pretty scrunched together, kind of like this. But in this case, they're kind of spread out. And this is just an example of a layout that I would have. For example, if I was trading the stock indexes, I would have them all next to each other. So the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Russell and the Dow Jones, nobody cares about the Dow Jones. In this case, we've got our basic columns here and I'll just go over the columns that are currently available in the platform. We've got volume at price, we've got a buy and sell column, we've got our price column, we've got the number of orders, which is an interesting addition right there, and we've got the total size on the book. So basically the number of orders column, in case you guys don't know, it's basically the number of individual orders that are at the current price. So when you see the size on the book is three and the number of orders is three, it basically means it's three orders of one contract each. So that's what it looks like. That's the platform, you can move orders, get into positions, go flat, cancel your orders. And uh, that's basically the way that I found to be the easiest way to manage. Now it is kind of arguable um, if you were to say, you know, how reliable would it be in a super fast market condition and all that. And I haven't tested it enough to tell you, so you guys would definitely have to test that out. Now, personally, I would definitely like the ability to, number one, change the vertical scale here. For example, S&P futures move around one tick and the NASDAQ's moving around, you know, three, four ticks for every one tick the S&P moves. So generally speaking, I would like a thinner vertical scale or more compressed on the NASDAQ and a slightly um, larger vertical scale for the S&P futures. And if you wanna see exactly what I mean, this is what I'm referring to where the S&P futures are kind of thicker and I can also kind of adjust that as I wish, kind of like in Sierra chart, right? So that's the idea. Now, one other thing that's pretty cool about this platform is that you can open up as many windows as you want. For example, create a new tab, open up the platform and log right in, and then bring that one onto another screen. So basically you can have as many individual instances of this platform open up at any given time, meaning that you can have one instance for your charts, one instance for your execution, another instance to view your account balance or quotes, etc. So I thought that was pretty cool. So for example, you know, I might wanna have one instance where I have only charts. So I'll create a workspace that has only charts in it. And then I'll bring that over to another screen completely. And on my front screen, I'll keep the DOMS for execution. Okay, so that's just how I would personally manage using this platform. And definitely I think you guys should check this one out, you know, and compare it to your typical platforms that you're used to using like NinjaTrader, TT, or Sierra Chart. I don't think they're trying to compete with Sierra Chart. All they're doing is trying to offer a solid solution to traders that have Iron Beam as their brokerage, that want to execute orders and not pay a per side fee like you do with CQG or Rhythmic. And that's another advantage here is that uh, your orders are all server side. There's no per side commission and your brokerage platform and trading front end to the exchange is all integrated. I've actually done the test of comparing the Iron Beam platform data feed to Sierra Chart Denali exchange data feed and Denali on the setting of no compression, meaning the most aggressive, lowest latency you can possibly achieve. It was faster by a little bit. It was a little bit more snappy on the depth of market. 
Now, when I was looking at the quotes and the time and sales in the Iron Bean platform, so I'll go ahead and bring up the time and sales um, for the S&P futures, I was able to see that the time and sales was basically exactly the same speed. There was no difference in the speed of the time and sales when I compared it to the Denali data feed from Sierra chart. So that's something very good to know. I did not do the test on the chart and that's it guys. So, you know, I think I did my best to cover most of the important aspects of this trading platform here. And uh, if you do have any questions related to this, you can either leave them in the comment section below or you can check out Iron Beam and give them a call and try out a demo of this platform to see if it fits or serves your needs. You know, guys, futures trading is very risky. Trade only with risk capital and uh, do not take anybody's advice out there on the Internet in regards to trading. Um, because you will probably need to learn the hard way anyways. That's why I'm not much of an advocate when it comes to selling education related to trading. However, that's a different topic. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and I'll catch you in the next one. Let me know what you thought of it. Take care.